Hi everybody, Deacon Devin here. Due to a technical error, part of uh, yesterday's homily, uh, the sound wasn't recorded. So what we're going to do is I'm going to read the gospel and give the first part of my homily again, and then we'll switch to the live recording of the homily from yesterday. Yesterday's gospel comes from the gospel of Matthew. Jesus said to the twelve, Fear no one. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs of your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Many of you know that uh, I am a convert to Catholicism. Uh, 31 years ago, I became Catholic. Um, and there was a little bit of a story behind that. When Aaron and I were first married, um, I really liked the idea of being a provider and taking care of things. And um, so I constantly fretted and worried about all kinds of things, where we're going to live, um, how much money we made, whether we could buy a house and do these things and take care of all these things in our lives. Aaron can tell you that I was a pretty much world-class warrior. And so all of that kept building until we got to the point where we were a little bit in, into our marriage and we lost our first pregnancy to a miscarriage. And suddenly all those things that I tried to control through worry, all those things that I tried to do, I couldn't deal with. And I was facing my greatest fear, which is that I couldn't take care of everything. And that's when I turned back to God and started to pray. And that's when I came into the RCIA process. Well, as I got into it, of course, there's a point in the RCIA where you go through what's called the right of acceptance, the point when you go from being an inquirer to one who is now on the path to enter the church. And at that right of acceptance, they ask two questions of each candidate. The questions are, what do you ask of God's church? And what will that do for you? I don't remember how I answered the first question, but I distinctly remember how I answered the second part. What will being a part of God's church do for me? The answer was peace of mind. And I have to say that God granted that wish, that prayer. And now we'll see how I picked that up in the remainder of the homily. that God has granted that. God has delivered me. It didn't happen all at once. It took some time. It took some process. It took some journeying with the Lord. But I can say that I have peace of mind. That I don't have those fears that I once had because I've allowed that to rest in the Lord. Today's gospel, Jesus is preparing his disciples to go out and to proclaim the good news. To go out into the cities and the streets and the countryside and to reach out to people and to be his emissaries, be the ones who preach the gospel to others. And Jesus knows this is not going to be without cost. This is not going to be without persecution and trial. Jesus knows already that he will die on the cross. He knows that his disciples, all but one of them, will die a martyr's death one day. And so he's given them his advice, his admonition. And he tells them, do not fear those who can kill the body, but who cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear the one who can take both body and soul and throw it into hell, into Gehenna. Now that one, that one who can throw 
body and soul and again there's only one who can do that and that's God the just judge and you may be saying and, and you read that passage and it's a little bit scary to us you may be saying well that's telling me I need to fear God that I need to be afraid of God and that's really not what he's saying at all in fact Pope Francis himself a pretty good authority I think had something to say about the fear of the Lord what is this fear of the Lord Pope Francis said, the fear of the Lord, the gift of the Holy Spirit, doesn't mean being afraid of God, since we know that God is our Father that always loves and forgives us. It is no servile fear, but rather a joyful awareness of God's grandeur and a grateful realization that only in Him do our hearts find true peace kind of what my story was about, wasn't it? About finding true peace. And Jesus goes on to, to tell us that, that look at the sparrow. Look at the sparrow that's out there that's sold for just a small coin. If it falls to the ground, God knows it. Your hair, the hairs on your head are numbered. God knows you. God loves you. There's nothing to be afraid of with God. There really isn't. Fear of the Lord isn't about being afraid of God, that God's going to get me. Fear of the Lord is about a healthy respect for God. A respect for God that recognizes God's awesomeness, that he created everything, that everything we have, everything we hold, everything that is dear to us comes from God. And also knowing that God is always there and ready and willing and waiting to forgive us. It's a fear not of being with God, but the fear of the Lord is about a fear of being away from God. That ought to frighten us. The thought of being on our own. The thought of not having God in our lives. That ought to be what frightens us. Instead, the fear of, God, of the Lord is something that is liberating. That allows us to live the life that he intended us to fear. Instead of all these other fears that just, that just hold us back. All these other fears that paralyze us. That holds us hostage. And the Lord came and he gave his life for us so that he could free us from all of those fears. That's what he came to be with us for. And so it's important that we recognize what our fears are. All of us carry brokenness in our lives. All of us carry things like shame or abandonment. Things in our lives that hurt us deeply and they cause us to mistrust or distrust they cause us to be worried they cause us to wonder and what the Lord wants us to do is to be able to take those things and give them to him to let him handle them because he's big enough to be able to handle them he's big enough to be able to give us reassurance that we are his own he's big enough to be able to heal us and to change us you might be here this morning and you might be thinking, well, you know, it's been a while since I've gone to the Sacrament of Reconciliation. And what the Lord says to you is, do not be afraid. Because in that sacrament, there's nothing to fear. You're coming closer to God. You're allowing Him to take away your sins. He's giving you the gift of eternal life. In the second reading, He said, the gift is so much greater than the transgression. Anything that we do, any sin that we commit is so much less than God's overwhelming love that can take it away. So don't be afraid. Maybe you're wondering about that next step of discipleship. We've been talking a lot about discipleship this year and it's a little bit scary to think I might have to give everything of myself to the Lord. But I can assure you, having done this for a while, that what you get is so much greater than what you give up in being a disciple of Jesus Christ because you get that peace of mind. You get the knowledge that you are walking with the Lord and doing His will. So do not be afraid. Maybe you're afraid because the people at school or the people at work aren't very receptive of a Christian message. It's hard to proclaim Christian values. In fact, maybe they even laugh at you. Do not be afraid. The Lord is with you. 
the same Lord that carried the apostles through all the persecution, the same Lord who came and died on the cross and was raised again, knows that the power of the cross and the power of salvation is so much greater than all the taunts and all the things that people might say. And so this morning, we have a decision to make. Do we continue to live in our fears or do we give them to the Lord? Do we take those things that concern us, those places in our lives that genuinely hurt and try to solve them ourselves? Or do we give them to him so that he can heal them and change them? And so I invite each one of us, and in fact, I'm going to pray a prayer asking the Lord to take those away from us. But I invite you this week as you go through your day to think about those things that might frighten you, those things that worry you, and to ask the Lord daily to give you his peace. Lord, we come to you with our sins and our failures, our fears and our doubts, and all of the things that concern us. And we give those to you, Lord. And we ask you to take those fears of the things that are outside us and to take those fears away and replace them with a healthy fear for you, Lord. A fear that recognizes your goodness, your graciousness, your awesomeness, your continual love for us. Fill us with that love and mercy and help us that our greatest hope will be that we are always with you and in your presence and in your grace. For we know that you are the one who can free us from all those things that enslave us to fear. We ask this through Christ our Lord.